all right so the second part of this lecture is going to be about the directed acyclic graph this is a tool to identify confounding um, and in here when i say confounding i'm uh, meaning that it is more than just identifying a confounder confounded could be a situation rather than one particular variable um, but i will i will get to that part a bit later so this confounding um, identification um, can be done by causal diagrams um, and these causal diagrams are basically a version of graphical models and use of this um, graphical models to identify causality is not anything new um, you see there is there was a paper in 1921 um, and more recently there was a paper by greenland uh, pearl and robbins in 1999 in the epidemiology journal that talked about these causal diagrams so what are these causal diagrams the formally you these are known as the directed acyclic graphs um, and the name comes from the fact that um, this directed means that there, there are some arrows involved and these arrows generally represent the direction of the causal relationship these are directed in the sense that um, the factors in the graph are connected with arrows so if exposure is a factor and outcome is another factor these two would be connected with an arrow if those two are causally related right and also um, in the name you also have this acyclic that means that no directed path can form a closed loop uh, that means a single factor say for example the exposure cannot cause itself it can cause the outcome it can cause other variable but it cannot cause itself that's why the arrows cannot have a loop in the sense that it comes back to the same variable so that's why um, it is known as directed acyclic graph uh, there is a reference here uh, you can take a look at this reference for further details all right so in general when we have something like this which is bidirectional this is not a dag because dag has to be in one direction only it could be in either this direction with this um, arrow or it could be in this direction um, it cannot be both so this is not a dag so if we get rid of these parts we still have this line and this is a path right so if it is connected say for example even this one it is a path between a to y it could be other way around it could be y to a still that would be a path right uh, in the same way this is a path uh, and absence of an arrow means that a is not causing y y is not causing a so no arrow means that there is no relationship no causal relationship and when there is an arrow that means that a causes y um, and there are many different interpretations you can make so as you can see this is directed because a is uh, directing to a this is a dag because uh, it is not bidirectional um, there is no loop involved so if a is your exposure variable and y is your outcome variable a is not causing itself again um, a is a parent of y um, so by parent you mean that the origin variable which is causing the other variable right so uh, in in this case a is the parent variable and y is the child or something that is an effect this is not a cause this is a effect that's why this is known as child or descendant uh, whereas a is known as parent cause or ancestor um, and and when you are drawing this arrow it does not really matter whether the effect is large or small or whatever um, as long as there are some relationship involved 
you will press an arrow if you think that there is no causal meca mechanism by which they are impacting each other there will not be any arrow all right so how do we represent confounding using a DAG generally speaking say for example if um, chronic kidney disease is our exposure and mortality is the outcome then if you have a um, third variable that is a common cause of both your exposure and outcome those are generally known as confounders and in DAG representation it will be represent, uh, represented uh, such as if A is causing Y then L is causing both A and L is also causing uh, Y. So that will be a representation of a confounder in a DAG representation. Alright, so there are a couple of names um, involved uh, as long as we are talking about the paths. So this path that is where A is your exposure and Y is your outcome and there is an arrow between A to Y. In that case, we are calling that a front door path and um, this generally includes an arrow from A or the exposure. Also, you can see this uh, path is known as the backdoor path and usually in the backdoor path uh, it includes an arrow towards A or into A so there will be an arrow into A in this case and this um, you cannot flow the information in this direction directly uh, because it is in the other direction of the arrow um, and that is why we call it a backdoor path so these are two different paths that are usually um, useful in identifying the confounders all right so let us try to go back to the original definition of confounder and this is the definition that i took from um, Roth, rothman's uh, epidemiology textbook um, and he says that there has to be at least two conditions right the, so the first condition is that um, a confounder must be associated with the disease right uh, so in this case if this is our confounder it is associated with the disease because there is an arrow between l and y right uh, note that he also says that either as a cause or a proxy for a cause but not as an effect of the disease so um, it is not an this l is not an effect of y because y is not causing l l is causing y right so this condition meets the second condition is must be associated with the exposure so the second condition is that these two this exposure variable and the confounder variable has to be associated this is also true because there is an arrow here right but the problem is if you think of a uh, mediator scenario where l is basically in the causal pathway that will also meet this definition right because uh, it is associated with your y it is also associated with your a but we do not want that because this is not a confounder uh, so uh, rothman stated the third condition uh, of the definition is that not an effect of the exposure this is this l is an effect of the exposure but in this case this l is not an effect of your exposure that means this would meet the condition of being a confounder so as you can see there are many different conditions that we are using here to identify a confounder but in a dag um, the graphical representation is much more easy to visualize and um, understand uh, and of course there was um, there is another condition that i can think of say for example um, often it is possible that a variable is associated with y but it is not associated directly it is associated via your exposure variable and those variables are usually known as instrument but in, for the purposes of this definition we are saying that 
those variables are not really uh, something that um, would constitute a confounder. So you can add this last um, condition as well that as long as this is not a instrument, uh, then uh, this is a confounder as long as it meets all of these three conditions. All right, so let me go through a couple of different DAG representation, right? So um, if you have a common cause that is known as a confounder, common cause of both A and Y, this is a confounder. And in general, we would want to adjust for this confounder to um, get a true effect between A and Y. Let me explain this in a different way. Say, for example, in a scenario where A and Y are not associated, but there is a confounder. In that case, if you are trying to find the correlation between A and Y, you would still find that those two are correlated. Um, why? Because they are both associated with um, L and L is causing A and L is uh, causing L. So by when your age is increasing, your kidney disease, uh, chronic kidney disease is increasing and your mortality is also increasing. Uh, then you will see if you try to find the correlation between these two, this would be uh, correlated. But this is a uh, non-causal relationship in a sense that we assume that there was no association but just because they are associated with associated with a third variable you are finding some correlation all right so what would be the way to figure out whether there is any real correlation or not um, in that case um, you would just adjust for it somehow you could stratify you could do reg regression um, to adjust for this and then if there is in no relationship then you would say um, that there is no causal relationship between a and y and i will show you one um, numeric example a bit later uh, so that that part will be more clear why conditioning on this is giving us the true relationship all right now Think about the second DAG representation. So in this case, um, the way it is working is that you have an exposure variable and that exposure variable is causing the mediator variable and then that mediator variable is causing the heart attack, right? So generally speaking, we do not want to control for this um, if we are interested about the total effect. Um, so in this case even if there is no direct relationship between a and y just because a is associated with m and m is associated with y if you try to find the correlation between a and y you will find some correlation right um, and if you adjust for this mediator variable which you are not supposed to do if you are trying to find the total effect from a to y then you would see um that the mediating effect and the uh, exposure effects will be separated uh, and you you cannot get the total effect anymore uh, and again i will show a numerical a numerical example to explain this part a bit uh, later what happens when you adjust for a variable versus not all right in the third representation i am talking about um collider variable and collider variable is something that is a common effect of a and y so in this case what is happening is that your lead poisoning is increasing your gfr and um, your kidney disease is also increasing your gfr uh, so this is a collider variable this is uh, an effect from both a and y so generally speaking we do not control for this collider variable um, so in this case when you have your a and y um, even though they are both associated with gfr you will see that these two uh, might not show any correlation when you are trying to find the correlation between these two 
um, and, and this is often confusing this is in contrast with the um, what is happening with the confounders because confounders are also both associated with the um, exposure and the outcome but when even when there is no relation true relationship between uh, a and y you will find some correlation but in this case you will not find any correlation um, obviously this is confusing why we, we do not get a correlation between a and y uh, to explain this you can think of a genetic scenario where you have a mother and you have a father and the child would um, bear the genetic variations from the mother and the father but the mother and father might not have any uh, genetic variations common um, and again when you adjust for this collider variable then um, which is opposite to the uh, what is happening uh, with confounder when you adjust for the collider then this path will open and you will see some correlation uh, in this case so this is one of the most common and interesting uh, factor in epidemiology for um, producing co confusion among the epidemiologists so in one hand when you have a confounder you are supposed to adjust for it and in another hand you have colliders uh, if you adjust for it then you are actually inducing some more bias in the analysis